Welcome to KetoMealsAndRecipes.com. I haven't made a breakfast recipe in quite a while, so today I will be making one of our favorite double duty recipes, this perfect breakfast burrito, which is made with breakfast favorites and is completely whole food based. For example, this recipe starts with scrambled eggs, crispy bacon, sharp cheddar cheese, topped with homemade quick and easy pico di gallo. And if you add a salad, such as my Thai salad, or any of the other salads, or to continue with the Mexican flavor, my homemade guacamole. This tasty egg burrito can become a complete meal. In this video, I will provide step-by-step -step instructions and show you how to make my version of this perfect breakfast burrito and how to freeze the extra burritos. For this breakfast burrito, the macronutrient ratio is 5.4 to 1, with 6.7 grams of total carbs, 2.5 grams of soluble fiber, 0.1 gram of insoluble fiber, resulting in 4.1 gram of net carbs per burrito. On this table I've assembled most of the ingredients. Now let's get started with the pita. Because this is a burrito, you will need to have on hand at least two tortillas, more tortillas if you're also going to be making extras for prep ahead and freezing. Although I have several tortilla recipes, Today I'm going to be using my pita two-way recipe because it has the lightest taste and all of the ingredients work really well together. But you can use your favorite tortilla. I will provide links to the various tortillas in the description below. After preparing the dough, I roll it out very thinly to make about a 10 inch or 25.5 centimeter tortilla when it's raw. You'll need this larger tortilla in order to envelope the wonderful ingredients. After rolling and cutting out the tortilla, I lightly cook each of these gluten and grain free tortillas using my dry crepe pan, but you can also use a frying pan. And when the tortilla is lightly done, just put it on a plate. By the way, if you make extra tortillas, the tortillas themselves can be frozen for use at another time. Okay, my tortillas are ready and the next thing to do is to make my spicy mayo. For this you only need two ingredients. To a small bowl, combine the Frank's Red Hot and your favorite mayonnaise. Stir until well combined and then set aside. Now it's time to make the pico di gallo. To the mixing bowl I add my tomatoes which I cut into very small pieces and by the way I use cherry tomatoes this time. You can use regular large tomatoes as well. The important thing is to cut the tomatoes into small even pieces. Next I add the very small pieces of diced jalapeno pepper and the diced onions. Now add the lime zest and I also add the cilantro leaves, which by the way I removed from the stems and gave a rough chop to. Add the lime juice, the olive oil, or you could use avocado oil if you prefer. Also add the salt and the pepper. Toss everything well and cover the bowl with either a lid or with cling wrap and set it aside. By preparing your pico di gallo ahead of time, this extra resting time will develop the flavor even more. However, if you do want a shortcut, an acceptable shortcut is to use a store-bought Mexican salsa. But if you're buying a commercially prepared product, make sure you always read the label. What you specifically don't want is sugar and any other ingredients that are not keto compatible. Now it's time to fry the bacon. I begin by cutting the bacon into even small bite-sized pieces and then just cook them in a frying pan until they're nice and crispy. When your bacon is done, just scoop it out and transfer your crispy bacon pieces into a bowl and set that aside for a moment. Before I forget, please reserve all the bacon grease. You will use some of it later. And now to make the perfect scrambled eggs. Crack the eggs in a bowl, add the salt and pepper and whisk well until the eggs are a homogenous mixture. But whisk in such a way that you're not adding too much air to the eggs. Then place your skillet or frying pan on the stove top, which is set to medium-low heat. It's important that you do these on medium-low. You don't want your heat to be too high because with higher heat your eggs will be more rubbery. Drop in the unsalted butter and when the butter has melted and is starting to sizzle like this, pour in your whipped eggs. I find that I get the best results with scrambled eggs if I use a non-stick pan. As the eggs are cooking, using a spatula, move the eggs around until the eggs have formed soft pillows like this. At this point it's very important that you immediately transfer the omelette from the pan onto a plate. That's because you don't want the omelette to overcook. 
Now that everything is prepared, it's time to assemble my burrito. And to assemble, first put the tortilla on a plate, place half of the scrambled eggs in the center of the tortilla, and then layer with half of the bacon on top of the eggs, half of the grated sharp cheddar, and half of the pico di gallo. Now here's the tricky part. In order to wrap this properly, fold your tortilla sides in towards the center where you have your little tower of goodies. Then hold the sides as you roll from one end to completely surround your ingredients like this. And the last step is to fry this burrito. I'm going to show you two different ways I made it. I'm first going to use the same frying pan I used to make my bacon. By using the same pan, this will result in the burrito having a really nice bacon flavor, but one thing that you will notice is that the burrito will be much darker as a result. And if you don't mind your burrito being just a little bit darker, you will be able to enjoy the extra bacon flavor. Now when making these burritos, there's only one caution I would like to tell you about. Don't be tempted and overstuff your tortillas, because as you're frying them, they may burst or unravel. And that's also why you want the bigger tortilla. Now the second pan that I'm using here is my Japanese omelette pan, which I find really convenient because it's about the right size for my burrito and as a result holds the sides of the burrito in so that my burrito doesn't unravel accidentally. But you don't really need this, it's just a nice convenience if you have one. So I place this pan on the stove top and when my bacon fat is starting to sizzle again, I fry the burrito seam side down until the underside is crispy and golden brown. When that has been achieved, give the burrito a quarter turn and repeat until the burrito has been fried and is crispy all the way around. After your tortillas are done, transfer the burrito to a plate for presentation purposes and because it just looks a little bit more like you would get it at a restaurant, cut your burrito in half on a diagonal and to finish this delicious breakfast burrito, drizzle some spicy mayonnaise on top, about one tablespoon. I really hope you'll enjoy this recipe. As I mentioned earlier, these breakfast burritos are amazing for prep ahead and for freezing. And all you have to do is wrap each burrito in aluminum foil individually, and then store the burritos in an airtight freezer safe container until you're ready for another breakfast burrito some other day. And then when I want one for breakfast, I simply preheat my oven to 370 degrees Fahrenheit and place my wrapped burrito on a tray and bake for about 20 minutes. This is just the suggested timing. It may take a bit longer or less depending on your oven. Alternatively, take your burrito out of the foil and just wrap the center of the burrito in parchment. This will help hold the burrito together. Put it on a plate and microwave for a few minutes until it's nice and hot. Although these burritos are quite nice cold, I really think they're amazing when they're hot. If you're wondering, these burritos can be stored in your freezer for two to three months. If you're still here with me, thank you for watching to the end and I hope that you have found this video useful. The link for all the tortillas, including the pita two-way recipes I've mentioned, as well as the link for the formatted written breakfast burrito recipe are all provided in the description below. Thank you very much for watching this video and please come back and join me when I post my next video. Have a wonderful day and I hope to see you next time.